Hello, friends. Good morning. Another day to get into the Word. And as we get into the Word, as we wait for people to join, let's let's throw a question out there, an icebreaker. What is your favorite scent? As you join this morning, tell us, what is your favorite scent? Um, for me, I think, I don't, know, I don't always pay a ton of attention to, to scents, but I really like the, the smell of frankincense. Um, it, yeah, it's like, it's like comforting to me. I just always love frankincense. So go ahead and tell us, what is your favorite scent? You know, some people are, are struggling with scent, uh, myself included, uh, since I had the virus back in July, uh, lost taste and smell, it came back. It's part of that scent, and I've been, I was reading about it the other day, that there's some people, I forget what the word is for it, but they're experiencing most of their scent back, but because some of it is not back, certain things that used to smell good now smell really bad. And so I've experienced that with a, a couple of things as well. But let us know, what is your favorite scent? And today we're going to look at Mark 8, verses 34 to 38. Oh, and it says, seeking a sign. But we're actually looking at Jesus talking about gaining the world. So, ooh, fresh cut grass or fresh cut wood. Yeah, that is a good, good smell. Fresh baked goodies. Yep. I don't know about you guys, if, if you've ever lost your uh, sense of smell. But... One thing I noticed is that temptations for unhealthy food were a lot easier. And I, I realized how much that smell lures you in, right? When you drive past a place. And so I, I thought that was really interesting. Anyway, a lilac. But Tina still needs to get her scent back. All right, Tina, we will be praying for that. So you can smell that lilac again. Cinnamon, okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Yep, if you're just joining, we're just talking about what our favorite scents are. And uh, some of us can smell, some of us can smell half the things now. And it's just an interesting thing to talk about. So anyway, let's get into God's word, huh? Here we go. Let's pull it up. Okay. Mark 8. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. You've probably heard that passage before. Take up your cross and follow me. And then we always say, well, what does it mean to take up your cross? Well, here in Mark, Jesus kind of explains that to us. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. Let's read on. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Gaining the world, losing your soul. It's a really interesting concept to talk about, isn't it? You know, I love that this, this topic comes up today because it, it really relates to our Sunday message when we talk about greed, right, and the things that we're living for in this life, what are, what are we living for? What are we pursuing? Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? So one attitude in life is to just save your life now. In other words, hoard things, uh, clutch it, cling to it, grasp it, try to get a hold of it for yourself. Take care of yourself. Trust yourself and see that in every situation, your first and major concern is what's in it for me. Some people live like that, right? And you know people who live like that because of how they relate to people. And that's that's one way to live. And we know from what Jesus tells us, and you know if you've ever lived like that, that it doesn't bring you any kind of fulfillment. Probably just makes you more anxious because you're trying to rely on yourself. So the other attitude, and that's what Jesus is talking about here, is losing it. 
losing your life, okay? Disregard what advantage there may be for you in a situation. Um, and move out of dependence on yourself to dependence on the Lord. And just trust him with what happens. That's that's the other approach, okay? So if you look at a biblical example of this, let's look at Abraham. You know, Abraham, he obeyed God. He went into a land that he didn't know, right? God just says, go to the place that I'm going to show you. And he just follows, right? He, he, he didn't um, exactly know what was going to be there for him. Uh, apparently kind of careless of what would happen to him. He just had to trust God. And that's what Jesus is saying about the way we should live our lives. Instead of living for ourselves, living for him, trust God, obey him. And it's, it's freedom because it takes the responsibility of what happens off of yourself and it puts it on him, right? It puts the responsibility of what happens onto him. So it's, it's a wonderful way to live, right? It's the way that we're called to live. Um, it, it doesn't mean live carelessly or outside of God's commands. But it means if you live for something bigger than yourself, the Lord, You'll, you'll realize that yourself will be taken care of. And that's the, the challenge that Jesus lays out for us. If we want to live bigger, that's the way we have to live. So, right, there's, there's two results that Jesus talks about. If you save your life, you cling to it, you hoard it, you get it all for yourself, Jesus says you're going to lose it, okay? Because you're not going to live for the Lord. You're not going to have a relationship with the Lord. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and forfeit their soul? And he, he's kind of stating this fundamental law of life that you'll find that you have everything you want, but you won't want anything that you have. Okay, you, you'll find that all the, the life that you tried to grasp is just slipped through your fingers and you end up with nothing. You end up with hollowness. But in the kingdom of God, that's not what works. Jesus says, when you take up your cross and you follow me, yeah, that doesn't sound like an enticing proposition but you won't lose your life you will save it and and you'll experience freedom and fulfillment like you never could before when you were trying to live for yourself and when you do that right when you you sacrifice when you live for others when you live for the lord some people will say you're going to miss out you're going to miss out on on life's pleasures you're going to miss out on some experiences you're going to miss out on maximizing your potential and acquiring everything you can acquire jesus says yeah but if the people who are doing that what they're left with is emptiness. If you take up your cross and you follow me, it it radically changes you. It radically changes your life. So the question for us this morning is that, first, is your relationship with Jesus radically changing your attitude toward yourself and the way that you live? And the second is, what is God's plan for exchanging our worldliness for his vibrant, timeless life. What does that look like for you? Right? What does it look like you for you right now? What do you think of when you think, I have to exchange some worldliness for some godliness? What does that look like? That's the challenge for today. And as you ponder that, you know, I would encourage you, if, if you want some extra enrichment on this, as you're pondering this, listen to... A song by Toby Mac. It's an older song now. I remember when it came out, just how much it impacted me and, and how powerful it still is. But it, it's a song called Lose My Soul. And it's about this passage. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Toby Mac, it's called Lose My Soul. And as, as we ponder this, we remember, yes, there's this challenge to take up our cross and follow Jesus. But we don't always do that perfectly right we really struggle with that because we have this human nature we have the, the flesh that we struggle with okay so we're kind of at this at war with the flesh sometimes but thankfully jesus did take up his cross in the ultimate way and now we're following him because he has paved that path to glory for us and so when we stumble on that path right when we choose selfishness we turn back to the lord we look at that cross that he took up and we know that we're forgiven we know that when we live for him, we're, we're ending not with hollowness, not with emptiness, but with eternal life.
We're losing the world to gain our soul and to gain eternity. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your challenges. And I pray that you challenge each one of us as we live with the constant allure of worldliness to pursue greater things. And not greater things as the world would define them, but greater things as you define them. Taking up our cross, following you, not living to gain the whole world and lose our souls, but to do the opposite. And we know that we can't do that on our own. We can't choose that on our own. That comes from your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill us with your spirit to do just that. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's another fun time hanging out with you guys. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. For those who mentioned they, they lost their smell, we pray for you. Pray that, that comes back quickly. And uh, God's blessings. We'll be live again tomorrow.